Hi you guys and welcome back to our channel. So today we're bringing you our original design modern farmhouse dining table DIY. We're so excited to be sharing this design with you guys today. This, like I said, is an original design by us and we feel that it's such a statement piece. It is now our favorite piece in the house and we've sold many, many, many of these over the past year and a half, two years. It is a newer design. So if you want to see how we made this table, for about $150 for a six foot, then just keep on watching. So starting with our materials and tool list, so we're gonna start with the stains. We use special walnut driftwood and classic gray, a mix of these, and then we used our impact drill sledgehammer, some clamps, and then we also used a Craig Jig HD tool. Uh, comes in huge, huge handy, and then we also had some lumber here, so we have some 1x4s, 2x10s, and 2x12s. The lengths will be varying depending on the length of the table that you're using, but you can refer to our list here um, if you're going to be making a six foot like we are. We used the Craig Jig HD uh, screws and the two and a half inch, uh, two and a half inch for the trim head screws as well. Our tried and true tight bond wood glue. Some of our bigger tools that we use is going to be our air nailer, and then we have our miter saw coming up after this that I'll show you guys. This is our DeWalt compound rotating miter saw, and then we also have a circular saw by Makita, and then also have a rigid table saw. All will be linked down below for you guys. quarter inch trim piece that goes around the side so that's three quarter plus three quarter equals inch and a half minus 72 equals 70 and a half Like if you think about it, you're sitting down like this. Like what? So 32 is right here. <laughs> you know? Like what? <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> we call this the T-Rex squat. <laughs> well, if you had a table any higher, like say you did 36. No, it makes sense. It, yeah, it makes sense. I know it looks ridiculous. That's why I'm like, oh my god, that's short. There's no way that's mm -hmm. right. But if you did 36 and you're sitting down like this, you're like this. <laughs> your table is like right to your chest. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so 32 height we're doing. That's right. Trust me, I, I made all the tables that height. You're gonna have 31 inches in height. And you're gonna have six feet, so 72 inches long, and then 40 inches wide. That's about the dimensions of our table right now, minus the height, because the height of our table is a little high, so we have to get kind of specialty chairs to do it, and we want a little bit normal height table. So we're gonna go with 31 inches. That's pretty standard, right about there. So, that's what we're gonna do. You've got inch and a half thickness of material to the top. So you have to factor that in. You want 32 inches to the top of your material, to the top of the table. So you're gonna have to minus an inch and a half, so one and a half. So you're gonna have to be at 30 and a half. That's what you're gonna cut your legs to. So right there.
felt a little bit of, what do you want to call it, hiccup? <laughs> On the height of the table. So we were originally going to go with 32, but uh, 32 seems a little bit high, especially for like, it just depends on like the chair you have. Like if you're gonna have a chair that, a normal sitting chair, you're gonna be at about 24 inches about where your leg's gonna sit. Top of your leg, when you're sitting down. So, you wanna be obviously enough room to kinda move your knees around and for my wife. Um, she likes to sit cross legged in all sorts of weird positions when she eats at the dining table. So, uh, we have to adjust that a little bit so she has that leg room. So she can go like this, and like this, and like this, and like this. Whatever way you want to sit. So, so yeah, anyways, long story short, we're going to cut it down to about 23 quarters. So, um, so with the edges, when you're getting like two by tens or two by twelves or any dimensional lumber, you have that rounded edge. I like to rip that off just to kind of, so I just run it down the table saw. And since, okay, so this is a two by 10. So actual thickness is going to be nine and a quarter. Um, or not thickness, sorry, the width of it is going to be nine and a quarter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my table saw to nine and eight and I'll rip it down one side and then go down to nine. So I take a total quarter inch off of each board to make sure that I guess I take off that rounded edge. So it makes it look a lot cleaner. Uh, it makes it look like the boards are a little bit more meshed together instead of having that dimple in between each board. So when you come to clacking this together, I'll show you that. Craig HD, when you're working with one and a half inch or two by material. So when you're working with one and a half inch material, you're going to want to use the Craig HD. You don't have to, but it works a lot better to make those joints a lot tighter. So that's what I'm using. It works really well. Okay, so another thing that's really handy is also this clamp. You know, honestly, I, um, Avoided buying them just because they were so expensive, but I mean in the long run It's worth it to just get the Craig clamp because it holds this thing securely You can get by with a regular clamp, but honestly um, You spend the extra like I think it's like ten dollars difference ten fifteen bucks difference um, It's worth it because it holds it down a lot more secure It's got these flat here. I'll show you It's got these little flat pieces right here that really secure the piece down. So, just a little helpful hint. Okay, so with the Craig HD, you're going to use the HD screws, obviously. So, uh, with this one, I just got the small box of them. I mean, they are kind of spendy. It's like six, seven dollars for just 30 count box, so. Um, but that's all I'm gonna need for this project, so that's all I bought. Give or take, I mean, if you do four or five, I do, yeah, that's typically what I do, okay. Now, I'm clacking four boards together. 
So when you drill the holes, just make sure you only drill them in three of the four because the last one you're not going to need to drill holes in coming that side because that third board will actually drill into the fourth board. So just do it on the three boards, that way you're not... I made the mistake, I'm like, oh, I'm going to drill the holes and then I'll get down the end, you're like, oh, shoot. But just a little something to note when you're clacking these boards together, just do it on three or four, or just leave that last board. So whether you're doing five boards or whatever, five, six boards, if you're doing six boards, just do it on the five boards. Drill the holes and clack that board together, so. Okay, another thing you want to keep in mind is that, okay, when you're using this map, Start on, the, start on one end, use this clamp to keep things flush. Because when you lay it down, depending on what kind of working surface you have, I mean, some people actually have like a full workbench where it's nice, they can clamp stuff down to keep it flush. But this will keep it flush. So that way, you start on this end, and then you start on the other end. And that'll keep the boards flush, and then you just screw the ones in between. Because the when you're working with dimensional lumber, like this, the boards aren't going to be exactly true, so we're going to have to kind of tweak them a little bit and, and get them to work for your situation. So I'll go to this end, I'll clamp that down so that's nice and flush. Talking to these boards, I was pretty selective when I went there, so I got pretty flush boards. Now that you got the two ends done, the middles are just going to be easy. You can just kind of adjust it a little bit, like this one just has a little bit of a raise. So what we'll do is just kind of push down. And that'll pull it nice and tight. And these, and these screws, the way they're designed, is that they're naturally going to want to pull up on it. So. You push down as much as you can. If, you, if this board that you have the holes on is up a little bit, just push down as much as possible because when this screw goes in, it's going to want to pull that board just a little bit up, just naturally. So. I mean, you'll, you'll see kind of some slight variation in it, so you can sand that down and it just depends on the look you're going for. I'm going for more of a seamless look, so it looks like these boards are all, it's one solid piece. Um, so you're going to want to try to sand those gaps down as best you can, but she looks pretty good. Okay, so for this part, this is going to be the legs. So we're going to use these uh, trim head screws. They, the reason why I like using these is because they got these. Here, I'll show you. They got a really small head on them, but they got these reverse threads on the top. So it creates a really strong hold, but it doesn't leave such a large hole. Almost the size of, honestly, like a 16 gauge nailer. Um, hole so um, leaves a pretty small hole so it's easy to patch in or fill in with wood filler uh, but it creates a stronger hole than a nail would so uh, so I use these uh, to hold these two together to kind of give it a thicker leg so I take both these uh, 
um, two by 12s and I am gonna mend them together with these screws. So, show you how this So if you use something like this, like a normal headed screw, you're gonna be left with twice twice as big a hole to try to fill in and it's a lot more noticeable. So these hold twice as strong and half the hole size. Once you got the one corner done, then you pretty much just slack in the rest. So, as far as how many screws I've used, um, I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws. So, you're gonna wanna do at least a couple in the middle to try to really pull it tight to kinda really adhere that glue, cause like I said, sometimes you're gonna have a little bit of a, a crown in there, so it's gonna wanna pull up in the middle gonna kind of create like a bowl shape. Some some pieces may be like that, so if you get a couple pieces in the middle, it'll really pull that tight so that glue adheres. Three and a quarter, 12 and a quarter. So it's gonna be from here to here. So, what you're gonna to wanna to take into consideration is where your middle support's gonna be. So, you're gonna have a beam or a four by four running in between here, but we're gonna have to cut a little notch out where it's gonna go. So here is your legs. Now, you're gonna have a four by four coming in between here and here. So you're gonna have to notch out a square out each side. Now you're gonna have to split the difference between the two. So, since you got two boards that you're clacking together, you're going to have to divide. That board I'm gonna end up milling down. It's a three and a half inch actual. It's three and a half inches, but I'm going to mill it down to three and a quarter. So, because I wanna take that rounded edge off so it's not, I'm not trying to go for rounded looks. So um, I'm gonna take that rounded edge off and I'm gonna end up taking off an eighth inch off each side. So it's gonna end up being three and a quarter. So three and a quarter divided by two is an inch and five eighths. So that means that I'm gonna have to go inch and five eighths in on each side. probably go on a little bit more I mean you want to give yourself enough wiggle room <clears throat> to I mean to pound that board in because you don't want it ex you want it as tight as you can go but you're gonna want a little wiggle room just to allow it to slide in there because once we get the thing together it's gonna want to go through and if, it, if it's too tight or if you have a little bit of wiggle room it's not gonna it's gonna want to go in nicer so 
so you don't have to sit there and pound it together. So um, you can probably just basically mark your line and take the line is what I call it. So just go in just a little bit, just give yourself a little bit of wiggle room. So I'm going nine inches up from the bottom on both these. So. So I line them up, nine inches, and then 12 and a quarter. Nine inches. Take the line, just a little bit past it. That's my depth. Set that on here. Chop saw. Circular saw. You just follow that. Take a chisel. It doesn't have to be super smooth flush. Yes, it will flush, but not super smooth. That's just kind of where the beam is going to slide into. You can see. So you cut a nice cut out.
and head screw. Alright you guys, I hope you enjoyed this very relaxed um, DIY for our modern farmhouse dining table. If you want a more detailed instructional guide, be sure you go and check out the blog post link down below in the description box. I also just wanted to mention quickly that these chairs are from Target. They are patio chairs from Target and they're actually 10% off this week so make sure you guys Go and steal those up while they are on sale. I'll have those linked in the description box for you guys as well for about 60 bucks each. Um, these were about 250 ish dollars total for four chairs. We will be making a bench as well for the other side. Make sure you guys are following us on all of our social medias and are subscribed to us here on our YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on any of our future DIY videos. And we will see you guys next Sunday for another really fun DIY. All right, you guys, thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.